Hi kids, and welcome to Tire Strategy Corner. I'm coming to you from my kitchen. This will not be a very professional looking video, as I do not have a proper video camera with me. That belongs to Jason, and he is at his house. Um, all I have is, is this camera on my laptop, um, and, uh, and some props. A cup of tea, not a prop, but essential. And I thought, seeing as it was all getting quite confusing, we'd, we'd take it to a base level. Prop number one, miniature chocolates. Other miniature chocolates are available. This is not an endorsement. It's just Christmas leftovers. And colouring pens. Okay, shall we begin? Uh, in testing, we managed to get an explanation done in just about under two minutes, which is which is the quickest I've been able to do it so far. Um, it's taking on average about ten. Um, is it overly complex, complicated, possibly? Um, but I think we'll get to grips with it fairly quickly as the season goes on. Um, now, Pirelli yesterday made available a graphic of which driver had asked for how many tyres. Now, let's start with the base concept of how tyre allocation is decided in 2016. First of all, it's the same number of tyres as 2015, so that's 13 sets of tyres per driver. Now though, there's three compounds available per weekend, and the drivers can pick 10 sets from whatever they want of those three compounds. Uh, Pirelli will bring then the extra three sets, which are divided into two sets of tyres for the race, and one set of tyres, which will always be the softest compound in use for that weekend, um, for Q3. Quite helpfully, um, for Australia, Pirelli allocated medium, soft, super soft. And so, one of their three sets of tyres will be that super soft to be held for Q3. The other two sets of tyres, now Pirelli, hit under the rules, they don't have to be the hardest sets of tyres. They don't even have to be different compounds of tyres. Uh, if Pirelli wants to bring two let's say for Australia, there's medium, soft, and super soft. If Pirelli wanted to bring two sets of soft for the race allocation tyres, they could do that. And then the driver would be forced to run the race on uh, at least one set of softs. The rule being that of those two sets allocated for the race, a driver must use one of them. But helpfully, Pirelli have brought a medium and a soft for use in the race in Australia. So Pirelli are bringing one set of mediums, one set of softs, one set of super softs, those super softs for Q3, medium and the soft, though uh, drivers can use either one of those for the race. So knowing that we have one medium, one soft, one super soft being brought by Pirelli in the 13 tyres selected, if we look at the graphic, we can pretty easily figure out which driver has chosen which tyres. We simply take one from the numbers uh, in the columns. Fascinatingly for me, um, Lewis Hamilton then opted not to bring a, so a set of, uh, of mediums, as he only has one, and that's the, the, the set brought by Pirelli. Uh, neither did either of the Williams drivers, Bottas and Massa. Neither did either of the Renault drivers, Magnussen and Palmer. Alonso, Button and Ericsson also allotted not to nominate a medium tyre, and neither did Romain Grosjean down at Hatz. Um, Verlaine and Harry Anto, though, both allotted three sets, uh, of their 10 would be medium. We can probably garner from that then that the mana drivers will be doing a fair bit of running in practice on that medium tyre. Um, if we look over testing, Mercedes did almost all of their testing on the medium tyre. They only brought four sets of the softs uh, over the eight days in Barcelona. So uh, they have a lot of knowledge on that medium tyre. It does, however, make things interesting when we get into thinking about, about the race and how the strategy is going to play out. Um, but looking at the softs then, you know, again, you take one away um, and from the super softs, you take one away and you get to uh, uh, what the allocation of 10 was. Uh, the only difference then between Hamilton and Rosberg uh, is between the medium and the soft. Rosberg with two sets of mediums, Hamilton with six sets of softs as compared to the five. And um, yeah, so on to the chocolates. Don't worry, this will make sense. So, why chocolates? Well, the reason I thought about chocolates was I thought if I'm trying to explain this maybe to my daughter, who is uh, very nearly six, um, how would I best describe this? Um, and 
for some reason, I just thought that this might be an easy way of doing it. And it's always good if you can explain things in a way that uh, that kids will understand. I think because that's an important part of it's an important part of our sport. And it's an important part of what we do. Is uh, if a kid's watching and they don't understand and they say, you know, Dad, what's going on? And the, the the parent can't explain it. They're more likely to they're more likely to switch off. So there you go. That's your allocation of tyres for Lewis Hamilton for Australia. In that he has one set of the medium, which will be this one. Six sets of the soft, and six sets. Of the super soft. And he's got to make all of those tyres last for the whole weekend. Uh, that's basically as, as, as simple as it gets. With the caveat, of course, that one of these sets of the super soft is for use solely for Q3. And one of the sets of mediums and one of the sets of softs has been allocated by Pirelli for the race. So if we look at it... That's your Pirelli allocation, and that's Lewis's chosen allocation of the uh, soft and the super soft. So if we go through, let's just take these all to the side very quickly. How do we end up with the tyres that are going to be used for the race itself? When do the drivers have to start handing back tyres? Well, it's quite simple. 40 minutes into FP1, driver has to hand back one set of tyres. At the end of FP1, driver has to hand back another set of tyres. After FP2, a driver has to hand back two sets of tyres. And at the end of FP3, a driver has to hand back two sets of tyres. Now, for the time being, I'm not even going to try and think about strategy. All we know is that Pirelli have a medium, a soft, and a super soft allocated for Q3 and those two for the race. So, Six sets of tyres have to get handed back over the course of the weekend. Let's say that Lewis Hamilton uses, in the first 40 minutes of FP1, his soft tyre. And at the end of FP1, let's say he does a super soft run. Let's then say that he allocates two sets of softs and two sets of super softs that he gives back at the end of FP2 and FP3. Okay? Now, all of those have gone. So... If you're explaining it to your kid, it would be, okay, well, you've got all of these sweets for the whole weekend of watching Formula One, but you have to have eaten one of them by the by 40 minutes into FP1. You have to have eaten another one by the end of FP1 because you're not getting those back. They, they go. So eat them up or they're gone. Same for FP2 and FP3. You're going to lose another two of those chocolates at the end of the session. So... You know, make sure you've eaten the ones. And all this time, you're, you're figuring out which chocolate bars you like the most and which ones you want to be eating during the race. Yeah, I know, it's a stretch, but there you go. So, those are gone. Right, they're gone. In our tummy. Yummy. So, what are we left with? For qualifying, then, and the race, we are left with Pirelli have given us one of the medium, one of the soft. And from practice, and our allocation of 10, we've got, let's just say for the sake of argument, two sets of softs and two sets of the super softs left. This extra set of super softs is for qualifying, for Q3. If we make it through to Q3, we get to use these, but then they're gone. Uh -huh. But if we don't make it at Q3, we get those for the race as well. So ultimately, we have to decide what our strategy is going to be based on the tyres that we want to have left for the race itself. Either six sets, if we get through to Q3, because we will have used that extra set of super softs in Q3, or if we don't make it a Q3, we get that extra set of super softs for the race itself. So you're either left with six sets or seven sets of tyres. 
Okay. Um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, you don't have to obviously use all the sets of tyres in the race and, qual and qualifying as well. So you're going to likely use you know, your super softs in qualifying, your softs to get through at a certain point. Um, you might want to keep that one set of mediums for the race or Lewis might want to run those mediums earlier in the weekend and get a good baseline feel for the car. That's where strategy comes into it. But essentially, the reason I thought I'd do it with chocolate bars is just that concept of you know, you can take nibbles out of these chocolate bars during the practice sessions. You can take a nibble out of this super soft or this soft in qualifying. That's fine, but you still have to have these for the race, whether you've nibbled them or not, or whether they're still in their wrappers. That's how you're going to choose your tyres for the race. And as I said, I, I, I hope it becomes a little bit clearer and a little bit easier um, as time goes on. Uh, and as the season goes on. But essentially, it's about, you've got 13 little bars of chocolate, when do you want to eat them? You see? Simple. Uh, or not. But I hope that it helped in, in some way. Uh, the concept being, if we can explain it to kids, then I think we're, we're doing okay. Uh, it's not the easiest of concepts, and I on NBC we always run this maxim that if you, you know, if something needs explaining, explain it in such a way that everyone can understand it. Uh, because if a kid is sitting on a sofa at home and says to mum or dad, I don't understand this rule, and the parents don't understand it and can't explain it, then both the parent and the child is likely to sort of disengage and, and say, oh, well, let's watch something else. Because, you know, why would you watch something you don't understand? Um, what this does do for, for strategy, I think, is really interesting. If we look at last year uh, in Australia, it was a one-stop race. And speaking to a number of people in the paddock, had a good chat with Toto Wolf about this. Um, he said the durability of the Pirellis this year is not as good as it was last year. So he's expecting one extra stop per race, which means hopefully we'll get a, a two stopper, maybe even a three stopper in Australia. There were some people last year that did two stops. Uh, Ericsson finished eighth on a two stopper. Raikkonen was running well until close to the end, actually on a two stopper. Um, but Hamilton and Rosberg, they did one stop. They stopped on about lap 25, 26, uh, as memory serves. Uh, changed off the soft, got onto the medium. Bam. rest of the race is, is done. Uh, Perez ran the most laps on the medium last year. Checking that was uh, 38 laps for Perez on the medium last year, 27 laps for Button on the soft with the longest stints. I don't think we'll get near that this year. But looking at our chocolates, it does throw up interesting strategic uh, plays. These are the two tyres that you have to use in the race, one or the other. Okay, it doesn't have to be both, but you do still have to use two compounds during the race. Um, I'm pretty sure. Um, so you can use the medium, or you can use the soft. You can use both, but you don't have to. Um, so let's say, okay, let's say you you allocate the soft. You're going to run the soft, so you're good to Pirelli's rules. And then first stop, you take on softs again, and then second stop, you take on the super softs, and that's how you run your race. No problem. Or you try and run long on the soft, and you do two stints on the super soft. Could be. Or, and here's the interesting thing, and this is why three compounds makes it interesting. Do you try and run, you know, let's say up to half distance on the medium? First stop, you change onto the softs, start pushing on the softs, until with just a few laps to go, you come in, change onto the super soft, and really blast it for those last few laps. That's the fascinating thing. With three compounds, there is a chance that we're going to see some interesting strategies play out. I think it's going to be very, very interesting. It is going to be confusing to start with, um, I think, for all of us. Um, you know, We'll talk to the strategists, and we'll try and get you uh, as much information as we can. The one good news is, um, again, having spoken to people at the test, uh, every time a set of tyres goes onto a car, its barcode is zapped uh, by the Pirelli engineer. And as I understand it, Pirelli and FOM have, have got a system running whereby as soon as those tyres are boop, zapped in the pit lane that they go onto the car, that information will be relayed back to FOM and should, we hope, um, be brought to us in graphic form, in a graphical form uh, on the screen. Uh, so all of us uh, at the track and all of you at home will know what set of tyres the driver is running, you know, whether they've been run before, old or new, you know, where they're at in their allocation. Um, so, yeah, that's basically it. And I've managed to do the whole thing 
without eating any chocolate. So that's your lot. I hope that makes some sense. This ended up being a lot longer than the two minutes, uh, very brief, very quick explanation we did at testing, but I hope it makes some sense. Um, we're all going to be trying to get along with it, get on board with it and understand it uh, as quickly as we can. I hope we don't make too many mistakes, um, but uh, do please bear with us <laughs> and forgive us if we do. Uh, that's your lot though, um, from my kitchen. Uh, and uh, yeah, we will see you in Australia in a few days time. Um, and I hope that has made some sense. Uh, right, that's it. See you later. Bye.